This is Still in the Clear, the podcast that distills the art and science of home distilling into easy to follow, audible nuggets for the beginning moonshiner. This information is for education and entertainment purposes only. You could even call it fiction if you want to. Home distilling may be illegal in your area. I'm your host, Cyrus, and I'm just a guy that lives in the woods and likes to make shine. So let's get into it. Listen, I just wanted to ask a favor before we start the episode. When working to gain exposure for this podcast, it helps to have reviews and ratings. So I'm asking for your help by going to podchaser.com to leave a review for this podcast. Let others know what you think about the show and help us grow at the same time. Thanks. Now let's get to the show. Hey everyone, uh, today's going to be a pretty quick episode because I'm just going to be talking about proofing your moonshine and the different times you can proof and different reasons to. And I've also got a really simple formula you can use to reach a desired proof that eliminates all the guesswork. Just makes it really easy. So, you know, wouldn't it be nice if you could just know, hey, if I want this exact proof, then I need to add this exact amount of water to this existing volume of whatever ABV I have, right? That would be nice. Well, this formula doesn't exactly do that. This is the simplest formula for proofing down to a specific ABV, but something very interesting happens when you mix water and alcohol that's going to throw off your proof by just a tiny fraction. And I'll talk about that in just a minute. But this formula gets you within a pinch of what you're after. So first, let's talk about a couple of instances when you want to proof. Number one, whenever you're making multiple still runs, it's kind of an unwritten safety rule that running a still with anything higher than 40% ABV is a safety risk and it, it shouldn't be done. And the reasoning is pretty simple. As you increase the ABV in the pot, you increase the flammability and therefore increasing the risk of a fire hazard. And I have no idea why 40% is this magical safe number, but I bet there's someone out there who knows, and I would love for you to let me know what that reason is. And there's links down in the show notes that where you can contact me and just send me a note and say, hey, this is why, and that would be awesome, then I would know too. Now, there are some points to be made against this idea of using anything higher than 40%, and you can go out into the WeberNet and find it. But I'm not going to make those arguments uh, because I think safety should come first, and there's just not a lot to be gained by distilling from something higher than 40%. Anyway, there are many reasons why you might make multiple runs, but... Uh, I think it's a good idea to stay under 40%. So you'll want to, sometimes you're going to get your, you know, your first run, you've made all your cuts and you've collected the total of what you're going to do and you want to run it again. Well, it might be at, you know, 110% uh, proof or, or, you know, 55 ABV. So you're going to want to proof that down to 40 before you make your next run. Just an example. Another reason for proofing is when you start the aging process. So at the point in which you're aging a spirit, it's important to know that a spirit's going to age differently at different ABVs. And I mean, it's actually going to, the, the, the flavors are going to be different, especially if you're aging on or in wood. Uh, you may want to experiment with aging at different ABVs. Different spirits are going to age differently at different ABV. Different woods will affect flavor at different ABV. So you'll want to know how to get to a specific proof if you want to really get into the art of aging spirits if you're chasing a certain kind of flavor profile. So here's the formula for proofing down a specific volume of spirit to a specific ABV. You take the actual ABV You divide it by the desired ABV, you multiply by the liquid volume, and then subtract the liquid volume, 
and that equals the required amount of water. So I'm going to run you through this formula with a simple example, uh, just to make the math easy so I can just do it in my head for simplicity. So let's say you have a gallon of 100%, which is never going to happen, uh, but f just for the math, and you want to make it 50%. So you take the actual ABV, which is 100, you divide it by the desired ABV, which is 50, so now you have 2. You, uh, you multiply that by the liquid volume. We have 1 gallon, so we would multiply that by 1. We still have 2, and then we minus the liquid volume. So the liquid volume is 1, so we subtract that from 2, so we end up with the number one. So it means that we have, we need one gallon of water to get to 50% ABV. So that example uh, is just simple because the math all works easy. You're going to need a calculator to do this. And I also suggest that you use smaller measurements than a gallon or a liter. You should use milliliter and ounces. It's going to help with your accuracy. And like I said, you're going to need a calculator unless you're just super good at math and can do that kind of stuff in your head. Now for the curious little thing that happens when you mix water and alcohol. So for the example we just used, we took a one gallon of 100% alcohol, mixing it with one gallon of water to get two gallons of 50% alcohol. But this is not what's going to happen. It will be slightly less than two gallons because a solution of alcohol and water will contract. It will actually get smaller. Now it's just a slight difference, but there will actually be slightly less than two gallons. So the proof is going to be slightly higher. How much higher is going to depend on the volumes that you're working with. But in most cases, it's just going to be a point or two. So it's really close to what you're after. So instead of ending up with 50% ABV, you might end up with 51 or 52. For most home distillers, this formula is going to be plenty accurate enough to do the job. I hope you found this information useful. Well, that wraps up this week's episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Share this episode with people you think might enjoy it. That would be much appreciated. It'll sure help our show grow. And don't forget, doing is improving. Have a good one. Talk to y'all next week.